Physical activity in lifestyle medicine doesn't just mean having an exercise plan, going to the gym, and working with a personal trainer. It can mean dancing, walking, gardening, doing a lot of household chores in a day, and even taking your kids to the park and spending time with them there. All of that counts into moving your body to maintain some fitness that can benefit your health. This is the Healthy Living Expo 2024, and I'm your host, Dr. Crystal Lau. And together with my partners, Holly from Intuits and Yota from Glam Up Beauty, we bring you this video mini-series to guide you on creating a healthy lifestyle while stationed in Germany. Physical activity is one of the eight pillars of the European lifestyle medicine, and it refers to all sorts of activities for everyone from all stages of life, including people with disability. And now, this type of activity is not limited to exercise that you would have with a personal trainer or an exercise regime following an app or something from YouTube. It is definitely not limited to just movement and exercises in the gym. Anything and everything that you do that engages your movement, breaks a little bit of a sweat, getting you out and about, everything counts as a physical activity. This is important because getting out and doing things is good not just for your physical health, but also for your mental health and social well-being. This brings me to reminding ourselves about the definition of health. This is from the WHO, and health is defined as a state of complete physical, mental, and social well-being, not just the absence of disease. This means that even if you don't have an illness or a health condition, but your mental health or social well-being is poor, that means you're not in good health. I like reviewing this definition because we're exposed to so much media and marketing that usually shows health as physical well-being. But we gotta remember that it's more than that. Now, the European lifestyle medicine is an evidence-based approach towards maintaining optimal health and to prevent, treat, and reverse certain chronic conditions and illnesses. This is why a lot of the recommendations that we will be providing in this mini-series will be from guidelines that have been designed based on scientific research outcomes. So over here, we've got the WHO guideline for physical activity, which is a free resource that you can download. I encourage you to do that. The links are in the show notes. It describes different groups of people and age groups as well, and the recommended time spent on physical activity and how often to do them as well. The great thing about the recommendations in here is they don't tell you specifically what type of physical activity to do, but they tell you the intensity of physical activity, which means that if you really like dancing and you dance a lot and fast enough, that could count as moderate to vigorous intensity physical activity. Even gardening, hiking, and taking a walk, even doing a lot of chores counts as moderate intensity physical activity. And of course, with many guidelines, it is really just a guide. So if you want something really tailored to your health goals, your health status, and what you can do at that point in time, it will be great to talk to your health provider, a health and wellness coach, or even a physical trainer to help you design a physical activity plan or goal that really suits what you need, want, and where you are at this point in time. A great way of getting started with achieving a physical activity health goal is to use the SMART approach when it comes to planning for the specific health outcome that you want to achieve. The SMART approach is very common in the business world when they want to set business goals, but it's great for health as well because you start off with being very specific as to what physical activity goal you want to achieve. And then you identify the measurables that you can count so that it helps you keep things on track. And you ask yourself, is this actually achievable? This is a very important question because you want to choose a physical activity health goal that is easy for you to get started with and to achieve because that rewards you and then keeps the ball rolling for your next health goal. Ensure that your health goal is also relevant because it has to be important to you. Otherwise, it's very difficult to self-motivate to continue and achieve that goal. And finally, it's got to be time bound. This means that you should set a deadline for yourself because otherwise it can get quite difficult for you to achieve the goal when you don't actually have that end point in sight. And finally, always set a reward for yourself. You don't have to, but it is a great way of motivating yourself that right at the end of achieving that physical activity health goal, you will have that reward and you're going to have a good time. Thanks for watching the video. And if you missed out on the expo, sign up for our email in the link in the YouTube video description to get the content and updates.